Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are coming to you from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank in Alpharetta. And this is a special edition. We're welcoming Jack Murphy and Nancy Diamond, and they are with the North Fulton Poverty Task Force. Jack and Nancy, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for being here. So tell us a little bit about you and tell us what the North Fulton Poverty Task Force is all about. Oh, well, thanks for having us. Sure. It's a great opportunity. Um, I have a rather ADD resume. Um, but <laughs> most pertinent to this, I was a city council member for eight years in the city of Roswell and ending in 2017. And I'm now project manager with a development group, um, Schmidt and Associates with Dave Schmidt. And um, we work on things like the assembly GM plant redevelopment. Cool. Things like that. Um, and my volunteer background is with Starhouse. I've been with them about 20 years. It's an after school program for children. We serve over about 300 children in five different schools in the Roswell area. Yeah, Starhouse does great work. So thank you for that. So thank you for your involvement there. Jack, tell us a little bit about you. I've been involved with the task force for about five years. That's about when we got started. I was there almost at the beginning. And I got involved because I'm involved with, uh, as a volunteer with an organization called the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. And we help people financially and give them some, some hope, uh, pay rent and that sort of thing. Uh, we've been doing that for a number of years uh, around the state and around the world. Uh, and there was this opportunity to collaborate with some of the other nonprofits in North Fulton. And there were also businesses and uh, faith groups involved. So it was a good opportunity to get together. We've been meeting once a month since then. Uh, and about a year ago, we brought in a consultant, thanks to a grant from United Way, to help us figure out what what should our organization do. And one of the challenges we were faced with was putting together a, a strategic plan for a shelter, a, an assessment center for people that are homeless. The work that I do involves a lot of folks that are at risk of being homeless and that they call and say, can you help me with rent? Well, if we're not there to, to pay for it, they might be on the streets. And there's many people who face that situation without support like us or other nonprofits. So we decided one of the problems was there was a perception that we didn't have any homeless problem or financial needs problems or vulnerability problems in North Fulton. So we came up with this idea of uh, putting together a summit and do a study uh, to really try to understand the problem, not just look at people that are technically below the poverty level, but people who also are just one paycheck away from from disaster. That uh, appealed to me, that summit idea, because of my day job. I work at a chamber of commerce, and I see what businesses – want to do to help their communities. They are very interested in helping, but they'd like to do something more than just be donor. Sure. So that's how we decided let's make this summit, not just nonprofits talking to themselves or faith groups, uh, but get businesses involved too, because they have a vested interest in, in seeing this situation treated at least if not solved. That makes a lot of sense. Now, I think you hit on something there that's, that's, kind of important um, is folks don't realize that poverty, homelessness, hunger are outside the perimeter issues, much less North Fulton, uh, outside the perimeter issues generally. um, People see that as maybe an urban problem, ITP, inside the perimeter. Yes. Yes, that's true. And Brookings Institute years ago did a study uh, that they update every year, and it's uh, shown that there's a huge growth in poverty in suburban situations. What's the number, Nancy? Um, well, in the Atlanta metro area, it was almost 130% growth in five years. And the 2000s represents the first time in history that suburban poverty outpaces the cities nationwide. It's, it's 
a staggering statistic, even more than the rural. And, and so we think of it as an inner city issue, and it really isn't. Sure. So if you just stop there, you realize that this is growing, a growing problem. And the big challenge for nonprofits is the infrastructure for support services for those folks that are in need are still concentrated in urban areas. Sure. In North Fulton, we don't have a place to put somebody when they're evicted from their home. We have to ask if they'd be willing to go downtown or to Cobb or Gwinnett County where there are shelters. We don't have anything like that here. And it's a growing problem. But that's the, if you will, the tip of the iceberg. There are many more folks that are doubling up in homes, kids that are sleeping on couches of of neighbors and friends because they can't live at their house. Uh, the, The problems are much deeper than just those folks that we see congregated around businesses, you know, pushing a shopping cart. Sure. Sure. Now I'm trying to mirror what I think maybe some folks are thinking when they hear this. Uh, so why is it that in an, in a booming economy, I mean, North Fulton is like a, a hothouse, uh, economic hothouse. We have to say, why is it in an economic hothouse like North Fulton? We have, um, poverty rates and homelessness and hunger that is going up so high so fast? That's a, that's a great question. The one area that we're starting to see a lot of is as we come closer to, to full employment, the, the, the theoretical full employment, we're starting to realize that there are still people who aren't in the workforce that could be in the workforce. But because of child care issues, because of transportation issues, because of skill sets, they may not be in in the workforce. That's where we're starting to see uh, some interest from businesses to say, how do, how do we get those folks involved? Those folks may have been uh, in poverty, or they may be doing okay, but they're just not thriving. They're coming to us for a food pantry. I, I know one family who has uh, $80,000 of medical bills that they had when one of the parents was uh, uninsured. They have two kids. They're the decent job. It's not going to get them out of need. And so in order to scrimp and save, they come to our food pantry at our church uh, just so they don't have to pay for groceries. And I guess the, the, when you think about this, so, um, and we are business. So let's, let's at least least sideswipe the business angle of that and then dive a little deeper. Um, why, if, if I'm, if I'm a business in North Fulton, how does this affect me? Why do I care? So it's, it's not just, you know, we've talked about our name probably ultimately won't be the poverty task force because it is so much beyond that Right into what we would have considered middle and, and working class incomes. And a lot of the very reasons a lot of people are happy in North Fulton, our property values are going up. Things are great are exactly the reasons that we're having these issues. And it's, it's a huge problem for businesses. The openings that are so difficult to fill because people can't afford to live near where they work. There's not transportation near where they work. Um, I'm on the board of North Fulton Regional Hospital, and there's always a nursing shortage. There's always. And it, the truth is they can pass multiple places they can work between where they live can afford to live and us. So we either have to pay a whole lot more or offer something a whole lot different, which is a cost to all of us, or we're going to have to find a way to mitigate this. There are double the number of police vacancies in Roswell than there was when I was there just two years ago. And there are 200 first responder openings in North Fulton County. And you, oh, know, wow. you can you can go into a lot of reasons why that is, but primarily we have a number in Roswell who have lived there long enough, have been there long enough where they didn't pay what we would have to pay now to live there. Mm-hmm. But the reality is it's too expensive to live here. And uh, uh, something tells me teachers are right in there too. Oh, absolutely. I, yeah, um, um, that that uh, because I've heard that anecdotally. I don't know what the stats are, but I've heard anecdotally there are vacancies in North Fulton schools among, among, you know, teacher vacancies. Absolutely. I, you know, one of my favorite 
other kids in my in my household. You know, all my daughter's friends were our kids too, and uh-huh. and one of them just left Roswell and moved to Woodstock, like so many of them do, mm-hmm. because that's what they can afford to do, and it's fine for a little while, and then they start fighting the traffic because there's only two or three ways to get to work, and working in Cherokee and Cobb is starting to look pretty attractive. So we're losing. You know, we I say all the time we go to a lot of trouble in this area to raise great kids. We spare no expense. We go to all, you know, we get them the best of everything, and then they can't afford to come back here. Right. And I don't know any business who would invest in that model. Great point. Uh, th- that's bringing it right down to what it matters for business. But what what you're getting to is there's a hidden, um, I'm going to use the word tax. Um, I'll, I'll go there. The, the, the hidden tax, a hidden cost on both businesses and consumers that a lot of them don't know they're paying. Or maybe they might sense it, but they don't realize the extent to which that raises the the cost of doing business or the cost of living here. Sure. You're exactly right. I mean, even when you think about it, just from a congestion standpoint, the, the folks that are working hourly jobs, the folks that are and, – and even decent jobs, $12, 13 $14 an hour that can't afford to live here, uh, we – Nancy and I just spoke a couple of weeks ago at the uh, Civic Club in Roswell, and one of the members was a, a somebody that works in the healthcare for seniors. They're having to give their their home healthcare workers vehicles because they can't find transportation or they can't find reliable transportation. Well, that's really good for that person that gets a car out of it. Sure, but that puts more cars on our roads. Right. There are ways that can so- we can solve that that are short-term ways. That's where we are right now in our task force is working on taking some of the ideas that came up from the summit uh, and figuring out what are some short-term things that we can do to impact some of these problems. Uh, the story that I always tell is I take Marta to work, and when I go down to the North Spring Station, there's always three or four little private buses from – from office complexes around North Fulton. They're not waiting for Marta to complete that last mile. Mm -hmm. They know their tenants need workers. Sure. And to get those workers to those offices, the apartment or the uh, office complex is taking the responsibility or the added benefit of, of rolling that into, to part of their amenities that they offer. These are some solutions that private enterprise can do uh, while we're waiting for other solutions. Now, one of the themes of the summit was financial vulnerability and the way you uh, think about that and measure that and talk about that. Maybe dive into that a little bit. The, the poverty numbers themselves are disappointing in that we have seen rises in certain neighborhoods in North Fulton in poverty. But when you look at it, uh, we, we actually took some numbers from Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They do a, a survey uh, for every county in the United States. What is the cost of living? Well, in Fulton County, it's a what is it, 70 or 90 mile county. The, the differences from north to south are pretty dramatic. Sure. Uh, and then you have the uh, city of Atlanta in there too. So we endeavored to break down those numbers to figure out how much does it really cost to live in North Fulton County. And the number we came up with was anywhere from eighty to ninety thousand dollars a year uh, for a household. Uh, that's that was surprising to us, and it's surprising to most people when you think about it. So, by our experience as nonprofits, when you are earning less than that, we are considering you vulnerable. Vulnerable meaning, if you get a health bill, if you get a doctor bill for five hundred dollars from the hospital you might be in jeopardy. And that's consistent with the Federal Reserve study that talked about how many households in the United States are just one emergency car repair or hospital bill away from needing outside assistance. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that there are are these financially vulnerable people are about to get on the streets? Not in all cases, but in some cases it does. If you're already living paycheck to paycheck and you do get that, that one unexpected expense, you're going to be knocking on our doors as charities to say, I, I need some help. We looked at the numbers 
And in North Fulton County, according to the Census Bureau, there are 60,000 households that earn less than $70,000 in North Fulton County. We consider those financially vulnerable. Okay, so let's make sure we, we're clear on this. So there are 60,000 households in North Fulton that earn less than 70000 a year, yet the stats say that to live in North Fulton, you have to earn eighty to 90000 a year. Right. We looked at we looked at the seventy thousand number because that's what census does. The Census Bureau does. Right. And so that was the convenient breakdown. There's lots of permutations though, even when you dig down. You know, a family that has reliable child care maybe has a, a relative that lives in the house with them, takes care of their child, they're not nearly as financially vulnerable as another family that has to pay for outside child care and their paycheck barely covers their expenses for the week. Sure. So there's lots of, there's no one profile of the people that are inside that situation. Uh, we know that though, that by just by demographics, a single parent earner getting $60,000, $70,000 a year, that, that by definition makes them pretty vulnerable because uh, they lose that job and there's no, there's no cushion for them unless they've been saving. And in those MIT numbers and the numbers that we produce, there is no allowance that doesn't allow any savings uh, at all. So, uh, so there's, there's, they're living pretty close to the edge. Yeah, the budget was surprisingly sparse. The MIT numbers for Fulton County it was about sixty five thousand a year for a family of four, and when you think about it, that was twenty four dollars a day for four people. Mm. That was one hundred and thirty dollars a week for two children to go to some kind of child care. And it was $1,000 a month, which doesn't exist in North Fulton for four people. Um, But there was nothing in there for savings. There was nothing for student debt, nothing for any kind of emergency. And and that's not a cushy budget. Right. And again, that's all of North Fulton, or all of Fulton County. That's $65,000, $64,000. When we looked at the data, the expenses in some of the cities in North Fulton are as much as 140% more expensive than uh, Atlanta. So s- some of those in sectors of child care and those kinds of things are far more expensive. Mm. Now uh, we're speaking with Jack Murphy and Nancy Diamond, and they are affiliated with the North Fulton Poverty Task Force. Now, and one of those uh, key costs there that was discussed at, at length at the summit was uh, housing affordability. Yeah, yes, that's the magic bullet. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's the, uh, that's the biggest part of anyone's budget, uh, yes. regardless of income. But the but the question is so yeah, for the, for the those that are on the that are financially vulnerable, they're paying a lot more percentage wise than uh, is is financially healthy. Yes. Yeah, so the goal is to spend less than thirty percent of your income on housing. All right. And the stats are completely skewed on that and it's again it's it's not as easy to see because there's so many people doubling up and so many things i mean we, we've seen it all over the place but the bottom line is even developers would tell you it's very difficult to create housing that's affordable for different groups and i i always hesitate with the affordable housing thing because everybody has a picture in their mind of what affordable housing means to them for a lot of people that's section eight totally government housing you know, there's a, a world of difference between that and two parents that earn forty, fifty thousand each. Sure. And yet the results are still they're having to make trade offs. So I, I think housing affordability may be a better conversation than finding affordable housing because, you know, what's affordable to your child who's making a good who has a good job but still can't afford to live here. Right. It, it's a it's a pretty big spectrum and I think we need to be more specific about how we address each stage of that. In our study, we looked at uh, some research that's been coming out of Georgia Tech around essential economy workers, they call them. Jobs that are, have to be done by people here. You can't uh, offshore a police officer's job. You can't, uh, somebody still has to dig a hole if you're going to build a building. Uh, And they have a breakdown of uh, salaries. How much do do these folks earn? And when you look at the average 
or the starting salary for a police officer, for example, in North Fulton, from an average standpoint, it's about two hundred dollars less than what the average rent is. Now, averages mean that there's an equal number of of folks above and below, so you can find housing that is less than that. But when you look at the averages, it's it's something to pay attention to if you're trying to make things better for all people. And a lot of what's affordable in our area is because it is in such shape that it's it's to a point where it needs a lot of investment to make it viable to as a property. It may not be comp- uh, affordable from a livability right. point of view. So I think what 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 you're saying here it seems to me is is um um the stock of available housing for folks that um are in these essential jobs that are less than 80,000, less than 70,000 is really stagnant or declining. Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. So what's the, I know there was a whole morning that to discuss this and, uh, uh, but uh, what are some of the solutions to this? Uh, for the, uh, the the listening audience, John and I have worked together for a number of years <laughs> on various projects. And, and I'm glad I'm asking this question uh, and the Jack has to answer instead of me having to answer something like this. And, and John has always been one to say, let's, let's get to the end of the meeting now. <laughs> one of the things that's unique about what we're trying to do here is uh, we're trying we're, – we consciously decided that we were going to get as many facts as we can around these. Right. And start community discussions right. to answer your questions. Because there are a number of cities around the United States where you see a whole bunch of nonprofits get together and they come up with a report and they say, okay, t- city, council, or town, here's, here's, all the, here's the 50 things we want you to do. Right. And the city council says, thanks very much, and it goes back on a shelf and not enough of it gets done. We're trying to build a community awareness and then commitment to doing some things, again, short, medium, and long term, that will start to mitigate some of these challenges. So our answer is not the kind of quick turnaround that most people would like. We're not saying, here's 72 things you have to do. This week, Tuesday, we had 30 folks that came from the summit meet together, and we chopped up all of the data that came from all the reports and results and suggestions that did come from the summit. And we've got five work groups that are out trying to figure, trying to prioritize all that feedback that came in. And part of that process is going to require them to go out in the community and test the ideas and then start to get from the community. What solutions do you need? And again, when I say community, I've got a big emphasis on businesses. Hmm. Because the problems that we are trying to solve as nonprofits to get people financially stable can feed some of the same problems that businesses are trying to solve as well. Sure. They're trying to get employees that stay with them and they're good employees. We're trying to see how can we get both interests met. Poverty is a really complicated problem. If, If you ask me how can I help feed this one hungry person, that's pretty easy. I can take him to chicken place and buy him a chicken sandwich. Sure. Uh, if you're asking me how to f- feed a neighborhood, that's a little harder, but not rocket science. If you're asking how to cure hunger, that becomes much more difficult. And that's really what we're trying to do. Maybe not cure these situations, but trying to put more la- lasting solutions in place by involving everybody in the community so that the the solutions stick longer than just let's hold a community meal and feed people. Right, which is really more crisis intervention as opposed to systemic change. Exactly. And it's not it's not either or. Sure, of we, course. My yeah. church is still going to have a Christmas program to help some with emergency needs. We're still going to be paying rent next week. Right. Uh, but we also are trying to figure out how can we really make a dent in some of these problems? Yeah, so I kind of set you up. I knew what your answer was going to be to that. I'm but, sitting here looking for all the answers. But part of the point of all this is um, 
that there are a lot, it's a very complex problem with a lot of different elements to it that one, a lot of those elements do involve business. So we're going to be doing a series on this as we go along uh, to both educate and uh, draw attention to this um, issue that does affect business. So we'll have more, more in this series. Um, but I, I guess to, to kind of, uh, draw it to a close if for this time. Talk a little bit about how folks can get involved and what they, what, what, what you're looking for. I mean, there's a, there are a lot of folks at the table now, but, um, one of the things that came out of this summit was we need business at the table because nonprofits are stretched to the max government, either depending on who you're talking to, either can or won't do anything about it. Depends on, you know, there's their, their hands are tied. It's hard to know what the answer to that one is, but, but businesses can step up to the table here. And one of the things that I think was quite notable is Renaissance bank, uh, was a sponsor of this summit. Uh, Northside hospital was a summit. Feel free to shout out some other businesses that were, that were, uh, uh, sponsors of this summit. We, we had a, a graphic art company. We had mm-hmm. uh, coffee supplied by the, uh, by the brewable. Brewable. Folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And the, the location, Mount Pisgah Church, w- was supportive. Georgia Power. Uh, Jason yeah. Binder. Uh, Jason Council, Binder. He, he, Thank you, Jason. He, he helped. Yeah. So, so the point is, is that there's some businesses at the table that see the need for businesses to be involved. So business owners out there, uh, 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 folks that are in corporate, how should they plug in? How, how do they get involved? What should they do? So probably the first simplest answer is to go to the website, uh, ourinvisibleneighbors.org. And at that point, there's a contact form to, to let us know who's who, and we can start getting people plugged in to just the conversation. Because I do think there's a lot of information from people who are dealing with this day to day Sure, that can be very helpful. And I, I, I'd love to start the presentations with, we're not asking for money. This is not, this is not a donation thing. So right. you know, I know businesses get hit all the time. And I think sure. part of what you see in the sponsorships is the recognition that we have a tremendous network of nonprofits in this area. And a lot of the business people are involved. I mean, Ken right. Davis has been front and center from Renaissance for a very long time and in quite a number of charities. So I think there's an understanding that, that there needs to be something, but I know they're getting hit all the time for one thing or another, and this is not in and of itself a request for money. Sure, and and part of it is just education, right? So, and and we we were talking a little bit before we came on the air about um, uh, signs of this problem that maybe aren't folks don't typically see as the I guess the um, uh, uh, the the fin in the water, if you will, that something's underneath, right? Um, the the long line at the restaurant, the 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 slow service suddenly at a restaurant because in the back that restaurant's having labor problems, and they because they can't get people to make the trip from where they have to live, which is not North Fulton, right? I mean, so there's some things like that that what we're asking is people to be alert to. Yes, right. I, think, I think that frustration at some point you could think to yourself, now what, what what may be causing this? And very often you'll see that's the case. Right, right. So maybe what we're asking is folks dig a little deeper, uh, not not in their pocket necessarily, but just in, in terms of asking why some of these things are what they are, right? Yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, I was working with a call center a couple of months ago that uh, was having difficulty getting employees and they were a company that had a location in Europe. Well, what do you do there? Mm. Well, we have work hours from during school hours so that we can get parents that uh, whose kids are in school to come work for us. They didn't try that here. For some reason, it didn't dawn on them. There's questions that need to be asked in a different way and solved in a different way than we've done in the past. The idea that companies can't find qualified workers is very true in a lot of areas. But we're starting to see some very creative solutions using the old European apprenticeship model Mm. rather than outsourcing training to a technical school. Their technical schools are great, but there's some folks that can actually start to do training on the job with people and get them employed and start generating money while they're being trained. 
So we're seeing businesses come up with some more communication or more creative ways of solving their challenges. And we want to encourage people to do that kind of creative ideas and innovative ways of solving their problems. Absolutely. So um, we're going to dive into this in, 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 shows as we go forward various aspects to this problem because as i i set jack up earlier what asking him to give me all the answers but the point is that there is a there are a lot of aspects to the problem that don't get solved with easy answers and so there's a lot of um elements to this a lot of uh, facets uh that uh we'll explore in this series so uh, but Jack, Nancy, before we let you go, just remind us again about how, uh, who, how to be in touch, and uh, for, particularly for people that want more information. So again, the website is our o u r our invisible neighbors dot org, and there's also a, a Gmail account with our invisible neighbors at Gmail. If anybody would like to volunteer or yeah or or get get involved in some aspect of this we're we're meeting once a month as a full group and then the sub work groups are meeting in between those so there's plenty of ways to get plugged in and the meeting schedules on the website or hopefully we meet the third tuesday of every month cool at uh, roswell presbyterian church okay 3 30 to 4 30 and uh, meetings are open Uh, we would love to have anybody sign up just so that we'd know who's coming The signing up on the website is at the very least to stay alert and informed. You'll get to see the report and some documents. That would be a great step. But if you wanted to get more engaged, you could get you come to the meetings uh, or work on one of the work groups. Outstanding. Jack Murphy and Nancy Diamond, thanks for your leadership on this. Thanks for having us today. Yeah, thanks thanks for being here. A pleasure. Absolutely. So, folks, just a reminder, you can listen to North Fulton Business Radio um, on demand uh, on any major podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Podcasts, Spotify, even YouTube. Um, Or or you can go to NorthFultonBusinessRadio.com, search our archive there. We've got – we've had over 400 – guest uh, 170 something shows almost 180 shows over uh three and a half years uh, uh nobody covers business in north fulton like we do we and uh engage with us on social media too uh by the way twitter facebook linkedin we're north fulton brx so for jack murphy and nancy diamond i'm john ray join us next time here on north fulton Business Radio. Renaissance Rewards Extra is the checking account that checks all the boxes. Roadside assistance? Check. Cell phone insurance? Check. More than 400,000 local shopping discounts? Check. Up to $25 per month in ATM refunds and a great rate? Check. All in an easy-to-use mobile app. To open an account or find out more about Renaissance Rewards Extra Checking, go to renaissancebank.com or visit us at any of our more than 190 locations throughout the South. Renaissance Bank. Understanding you. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender.